If you're sick of posting online about your struggles with Elden Ring and being told to get good, this video is for you. If I don't cover a tip that you know, I'm only one man, so please share all of your best tips below so we can help others get better too. One, here's a great farming spot for you early players. From the first step site of grace, simply head over to the third church of Marica over in Misswood right here. Once you get there, you'll notice just behind the church, there's a teleporter chilling in the bushes. Head on through it. You'll end up at the bestial sanctum in Caleb. From here, head straight down the hill, aiming for the bridge. Then on your left, you'll see a sight of grace. Grab it. Now you're here, it's time to get to work. There are small men walking around all over this area. And whilst they do hit hard, you can easily sneak up and backstab them. Just be sure to keep hitting the lock on button to find the enemies because they do blend into the background. You'll get a nice 1,200 runes per kill. So you can do a nice loop here. There's about five enemies to the west, 12 to the north, and around eight to the east. To get this done quicker, spawn in a friend and you go one way and have your friend run the other. You'll both get the full 1,200 runes per kill and it'll get done twice as fast. Two, low on rune arcs, no problem. Kill rats because they have a great drop rate for them. For anyone early game, you can find a whole room of rats down the steps at Dragon Burnt Ruins, just east of the first step site of grace. Three, you can actually get one of the best weapons for one of the strongest builds in Elden Ring straight at the beginning of the game. From the first step site of grace, head over here to Markwater Cave. You'll be attacked by an NPC. If you wait long enough, a hunter NPC named Yora will come aid you. After you defeat the enemy, head north a few steps and Yora the Hunter will be standing there. If you kill him, you'll get his katana, the Nagakiba. This sword is great for a build we made a video on that we named Rivers of Poison. This is because it mimics the Rivers of Blood Sword, but hits 10 times harder. I'll share the full build in the comments and the description. Four, if an enemy bursts with blue light when you defeat them, it means they're going to drop an item, so stick around. Five, to use the Taunter's Tongue, you'll need to activate your Feral Calling Finger Remedy first. Six, stop scrolling to the round table site of grace. Simply open your map and hit triangle and then square for PlayStation, or Y then X for Xbox. You'll teleport straight there. Seven, I only actually figured this out the other day. This is how you add items to your pouch. To bring up the pouch, hold triangle on PlayStation and Y on Xbox. Eight, to leave longer messages for people, all you've got to do is this. Nine, for anybody that doesn't know, immunity level is your resistance to poison and rot. Robustness is your resistance to bleed and frost. Focus is your resistance to sleep and madness. And vitality is your resistance to the buildup of death. This isn't to be confused with actual dying. It's the black bar that comes up when you're hit with the death status effect, mainly by these idiots. 10. Arcane is the most underrated attribute. It boosts holy resistance, boosts discovery, which means you'll find much better loot. It boosts vitality, which, like we said before, is your resistance to the death status build. It can make weapons and incantations with status effect insanely powerful, and some of the best weapons in the game scale with Arcane too. 11. Killing every merchant you come by can be incredibly useful. If you can get past the fact that it's kind of wrong and just an awful thing to do considering what these guys have already been through, then be like me. Kill them, take their bell bearings, and consolidate your shop at the round table hold. Here you can offer the bell bearings to the twin maiden husks. Now you have a handy one stop shop for all of your item needs. 12. There are actually two ways straight to Kaled from the start of the game. There's the one we mentioned earlier using the teleporter behind the third church of Marika, but there's also a quicker way if you head east from the first step site of Grace and then head down the steps at Dragon Burnt Ruins. Behind a the door there's a chest that will teleport you to Celia Crystal Tunnel. You'll spawn in a little hut. If you leave the hut, head down the cliff behind it and keep heading in this direction, you'll eventually leave the tunnel and boom, you are done. 13. You can easily cheese the first boss Margit by getting his shackles from patches in Murkwater Cave, then using the shackles three to five times outside of the boss room door. When you go in, he won't be able to move. If you then slowly hit him with weapons that don't stagger him, you'll beat him without taking damage. 14. You can easily cheese Godric by using the Rotten Stray's Spirit Summon you find near Celia Understair. Call the dog in, it will hit Godric a few times and cause him to get Scarlet Rot. You could also hit him with anything else that inflicts Scarlet Rot, like Rotten Breath. Once he's got the status effect, just stay away from him, he'll 
never go into a second phase and he will eventually just die. 15. You can cheese Radan by getting his attention and climbing up here. He will try to follow and then it will slip off and die. If you want to know the specifics, I'll share the video in the comments and the description. 16. This merchant in Kaelid sells an unlimited supply of poison arrows. 17. You can cheese Moog by hitting him from outside the boss door with poison arrows. Once he staggers, wait for him to get back up, go in and he won't be able to move. The full video with the specifics will be in the comments and the description. 18. Let's stop doing boss cheese tips for a second here and focus on leveling. You can actually hit level 30 plus in the first 10 minutes of the game. Just grab the flail from the chest near the Stormgate site of Grace, and then the golden pickled foulfoot on the beach behind the first step. Head through the chest portal with Dragonburnt Ruins we mentioned earlier, leave Celia Crystal Tunnel, and run up to Celia Understep. Just do the first puzzle to open the sealed door, you literally just have to light a torch in one of the towers. From here, just keep heading north until you reach the Fort Farath site of Grace. Rest here, then do the old killing the dragon technique. Use the flail, which will cause increments of blood loss buildup and it won't be very long before you defeat the dragon. When the dragon's close to dying, you can pop your golden pickled foul foot for a big payout of runes. If you want to cheese this, you can actually run to the Fort Farah site of Grace as the dragon is dying. Resting will reset the dragon, but you'll still get your runes. 19. Those heavy hitting minor guys in all of the mine tunnels scattered across the world can be beaten easily by slapping them with a torch. It will light them on fire and then they'll explode, damaging others around them. 20. Speaking of torches, get yourself the beast repellent torch to keep wolves, those horrible giant dogs, and other annoying beasts away from you. You can grab that torch here. Speaking of torches again, get yourself the sentry's torch. This will reveal the invisible black knife assassins that you come across in a few parts of the game. You can get this torch here. Okay, last torch related tip, I promise. Get yourself the Centrina's torch from this location. It has a power that causes sleep buildup and it's great to have just chilling in your offhand. 23. Speaking of St. Trina, this merchant to the east of the academy main gate sells St. Trina's arrows, which are incredibly effective at putting the godskin duo to sleep with just three arrows. Then it takes them ages to wake up when you start hitting them. Just don't use the sleep bone arrows for this, it doesn't work as well. I've got a video on this strategy, I will drop it below. 24. Don't waste time farming smithing stones and somber smithing stones. You can find bell bearings that will allow you to purchase them whenever you want. To be able to purchase smithing stone 1 and 2 in the round table hold, you need to beat the boss in Rare Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. To buy smithing stone 3 and 4, you'll need to get the bell bearing which is chilling in a chest in the sealed tunnel. For smithing stone 5 and 6, from the Zama Ruin site of Grace in Mountaintops of the Giants, just head southeast through the ruins. You'll see some steps heading down. At the bottom, the bell bearing is in a chest. Smithing stone 7 and 8, you'll be rewarded with the bell bearing for defeating the Godskin duo. For somber smithing stone 1 and 2, you'll need to beat the boss in Celia Crystal Tunnel. Somber smithing stone 3 and 4, you'll need to defeat the two crystal bosses in the Atlas Tunnel. For smithing stone 5 and 6, the bell bearing is on a dead body outside the first church of Marika in the mountaintops of the giants. Somber smithing stone 7 and 8, the bell bearing is on a dead body too. This one is located a few steps north of the Tempest facing balcony site of Grace in Crumbling Faramazula. Somber smithing stone 9, from the Dragon Temple rooftop site of Grace, follow the path that leads towards the giant dragon shooting lightning at you. Pass the dragon and head right, keep following this path and you'll see a temple with beasts in it. Kill the beasts and loot them for the bell bearing. You'll now be able to upgrade your weapons to either plus 24 or plus 9, then you'll need the dragon smithing stone to go one higher. 25. Radigan will go down easily if you're using the black flame incantation or any black flame related spells and weapons. 26. The Elden Beast can be absolutely destroyed by the Pest Threads incantation. 27. You don't have to go all the way to the end of Millicent's questline to get her prosthesis talisman. When she spawns in at the Windmill Village site of Grace after the Godskin fight, just kill her and she'll drop it. 28. Melania is super easy to stagger if you pump up your strength stat, use the giant will weapon skill with the stone barbed crack tier. You'll break her in seconds and then if your stamina is high enough, you could completely shred through her health bar. 29. You could be running around with a health debuff and not even know it. Hugging fear at the round table hold will give a 5% debuff to your health. 
She'll give you an item called Boulder Chin's Blessing that helps with poise. Simply use the item and it will get rid of the health debuff when the item runs out. There's no real reason to do this unless you're looking to have a poise focused fight like the Melania one I mentioned earlier, or maybe you just can't stay away from those hugs. 30. You can easily dupe weapons and items without messing with your saves. I've got a video on it and I'll drop it below. We also have a discord filled with hundreds of players looking to dupe, trade, fight bosses and all of that so definitely go check that out too. 31. Get the flame cleanse me incantation from here before you go down to the Scarlet Rot Lake. Trust me, you'll thank me later. 32. Stock up on warming stones, they'll heal you and your friends when stood in the glowing area, but don't let a boss go in there, because they will get the healing benefits too. 33. At the time of recording, there's a great rune farm in the mountain tops of the giants. It'll have you jumping off of the ledge here, double jumping, and then swinging your sword constantly. You'll keep falling and end up getting a few hundred thousand runes, just spawn at a site of grace and do it again. 34. If you're having trouble with PvP players glitching into unreachable areas and going AFK, Moog's Sacred Spear has a great special attack that will hit most players wherever they're hiding. 35. To get across the Rise Tower Invisible Snow Bridge located here, equip your bow and shoot enough arrows to lead the way. There's also a good chance there will be a lot of blood stains of fallen players to lead you to the end, so look out for that. 36. There is a staff in Elden Ring that does Scarlet Rot damage as well as boosts Crystal Sorceries. It's a pretty decent staff right off the bat. To get it, you're going to need a decent arcane or a lot of patience. To find it, you'll need to go to this site of grace in the Halic Tree. Then just over here, you'll find three of those annoying crystal enemies. Just hit the one holding the staff with something like Rock Sling until they die. If they don't drop you an item, run back to the site of grace, rinse and repeat. 37. Another Scarlet Rot based tip. Stop rolling in it. If you roll or jump in Scarlet Rot or Poison, you'll get it on your clothes. Then when you leave, the bar will continue to rise. You can use soap to clean it off or you can just rest at a site of grace, although the status effect will eventually go as long as it doesn't kill you first. 38. For early players, the best legit farming spot in Limgrave is just outside of Waypoint Ruins, here. You'll find a huge convoy with two giants. Once you've taken all of these guys down, you'll find plenty of stragglers along the road. Just respawn at the Waypoint Ruins site of grace to do it all again. 39. Get the Rotten Breath incantation as soon as possible, as it is incredible for farming, especially if you don't have that endgame sword yet. 40. You can do a cool backflip with some swords by hitting the backstep button mid heavy attack. This will damage an enemy while simultaneously moving you from harm. 41. You can cheese the Mimic tier boss fight by stripping naked, starting the fight, and then equipping a weapon. And then the tier will have to fight you with fists. 42. Shoot these poison ball boys with something poison for some fun fireworks. 43. Any boss or enemy made out of a type of stone or metal can be confused when hit with the crystal darts. For example, you can do this to the small cat looking imps, the watchdog statue bosses, the giant golems, and loads more. Simply throw a bunch at the enemy and it will begin attacking anything close by. 44. You can sort your equipment by pushing in the left stick on your controller. There's an option for newly acquired, which is perfect when you've just found a weapon and don't have a clue where it is. 45. This tip comes from hours and hours of frustration when in the Elden Ring map. Trying to hunt down older versions of those little blue markers I put down. Although you can't just click a delete all button, which would be fantastic. You can just spam five of them in the same place to remove them from the random parts of the map. From here, you can just delete them or ignore them. After you've placed five, the next one you place will be number one. 46. This tip should hopefully help you save a couple of minutes each time. There's actually two easier ways to activate your rune items. Instead of going in, activating them, waiting for the animation to play, simply open up your inventory, press in the right stick for console, and it will remove half of the menu, leaving the left one open. From here, you don't need to go into your menu every single time, which should save you a couple of minutes. But for those who want to save even more time, you can sell your runes to merchants. You'll get the exact same amount as you would by using them, but this way there's no animation at all and you can clear all of them from your inventory in seconds. And if you're like me and you forget to use them, this is going to save you a lot of time. 47. For almost all fights in Elden Ring, rolling towards the enemy during their attacks is way better than rolling away. I found this little tip incredibly helpful trying to fight New Game 7 Radigan, who is not fun to fight. 
at all. 48. When fighting bigger enemies like the Fire Giant or the Elden Beast, try fighting them without locking onto them. Being locked on will sometimes prevent you seeing an incoming attack, and if you're a Bloodhound step user, being locked on to enemies will sometimes cause your step to drag you towards them, which could very easily get you killed. 49. I was surprised to see on Reddit that some players didn't know that you could switch your weapon to your offhand when on torrent, so if you're a caster and you don't want to pointlessly hit an enemy with your staff, simply press triangle and L1 for PlayStation or Y and LB for Xbox. Now you can use your other weapon and get the kill. Doing the right side of this combination will bring up your main weapon again. 50. A quick one here, mounting and dismounting your horse will make you invincible for a few seconds. You can use this when you don't think you'll have enough time to get out of there. 51. So something that I didn't know that my friend told me about, the horse jump pad things that throw you into the air actually have a second use. You can jump off of cliffs onto them and they'll cushion your fall. 52. Most players are going to know this one, but let's talk rainbow stones. Throw one off an edge, if it lands safely, you're good to jump off. If it smashes and breaks, so will you. 53. Hold down on your D-pad to jump to the first slot in your item list. 54. If you don't have a build that has a lot of FP but you really want to use a high level spirit summon, just get the Cerulean Hidden Tear in your Wondrous Physics Flask. It will give you unlimited FP for 15 seconds, meaning you can summon in whoever you want. You can grab it from Mount Gelmir. You will have to kill the ulcerated tree spirit which is located here. 55. When you get to the Stormvale Castle and that creepy guy asks if you want to take the main gate or sneak around, make your decision and then kill him. If you leave him alive, not only does he lock you in a room with a tough enemy later on, but each time you die during the Stormvale portion of the game, he'll actually take a percentage of your runes. 56. These tendrils on the map are actually showing you the direction you need to head in for the main story. 57. Fighting enemies near the edge of a cliff may seem dangerous, but FromSoft has actually worked a little magic here. If you're spamming an attack, you won't fall off the edge. However, you can still very easily walk off, roll off, slip off, run off, jump off on your horse, get thrown off by enemies, so maybe just don't fight by the edge. 58. The weather will affect the damage you deal and take. If it's raining, you'll deal way more lightning damage. You'll deal even more if your enemy is standing in the water as the shocks will burst outward causing an AoE effect. But with all that being said, the rain will also weaken your fire spells. It seems to be about a 10% change either way. 59. Sometimes golden leaves will fall from the sky. This will grant you a buff to your rune acquisition and your item discovery. 60. When forced to traverse those lava, scarlet, rotten, poison sections, just use the quick step or bloodhound step ash of war, you will get out of there easier. 61. You can cheese Commander Nile at Castle Soul by shooting him with poison arrows through this tiny gap in the wall. I'll share our full video on this below. 62. You can drink your flasks rapidly, one after the other. 63. Throwing a freezing pot at Melania during her waterfowl dance attack will actually interrupt her. 64. If you go to the Stargazer's ruins at the mountaintops of the giants, located here, you'll come across a jellyfish. I won't ruin it for you, but just listen to what it has to say and then summon in your jellyfish. It's pretty wholesome stuff. 65. There's a unique animation for killing those giant flame head enemies. If you get above them, jump and hold an attack, you'll stab them in the vent and blow them up. 66. If you want to be really spiteful when fighting in PvP, you can let the enemy do all of their buffs from Flame Grant Me Strength to their Wondrous Physic, and just as they're ready to fight, you can cast Law of Regression, which will actually remove all of the buffs they just applied. This can be quite funny, and I imagine it infuriates the other players. You can get the spellbook for Law of Regression from the Erdtree Sanctuary here. 67. And finally, there is an insane bleed build you can put together quite easily. Using it will eat through boss health incredibly fast. I killed Melania in 5 hits using it, and I killed Malaketh in 3. The build requires 2 curved swords, the white mask, and raptor's feather armor. For the full build, including the location of all the items, talismans, and tears for your wondrous physic, you can check out the video on screen now. Don't forget to comment down below any extra tips that you think will help everyone out and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.